And developing tonight, there is a controversy flaring up roughly 12 hours ahead of President Obama's attendance tomorrow morning at the dedication ceremony for the new national September 11th Memorial and Museum, which is finally opening after all these years. Uh, it looks stunning. Uh, when you get these glimpses of what it's going to be. But the Council on American Islamic Relations, also known as CARE, has now come out and backed an effort to ban words like jihad and phrases like Islamic extremism from a seven-minute documentary that describes what happened that day and talks about al-Qaeda's role. The museum is standing firm, though, and they have released a partial transcript of the seven-minute film. Quote, the program tracks al-Qaeda's embrace of violence and the decision of its leadership to commit mass murder at the dawn of the 21st century. Dr. Zudi Jasser is founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and a former lieutenant commander in the U.S. Navy. Dr. Welcome. Good to speak to you again. Thanks for being here tonight. Nice, nice to be with you, Martha. Thanks for having me. So what do you think about the opposition to these words, Islamic extremism and jihad, and how can you possibly exclude them from a discussion of what happened on September 11th? Martha, I just can't tell you how, much, how frustrating this is. And seriously, we're still having this conversation over 13 years since 9-11, after the Arab awakening, when we see Islamist movements spreading from Pakistan to Saudi Arabia to Egypt that over, took over a government with the Brotherhood in Egypt with millions and millions part of that movement with radicalism from Hamas to Al-Qaeda to Boko Haram. And yet these groups, what they're trying to do is enact blasphemy laws in America. Why? For two reasons. Number one, the nonviolent Islamists were very upset with Al-Qaeda in 9-11 because it outed their motives to spread supremacist Islam into the West and prevent reform and, and outed what they wanted against liberalism in the West. Secondly, is they want to suppress the voice of moderates, reformers like myself and other Muslims who really are working against Islamism, doing jihads against jihad, and we can't reform unless we use the language they use. So by suppressing the language, they then prevent the reform and say, well, we wash our hands, no problem here, move along. Al-Qaeda came out of thin air. It didn't come out of political Islam. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure how they can, you know, legitimately make an argument that there's a separation between Al-Qaeda and a religious fanaticism, and in this case, an Islamic uh, religious uh, fanaticism or radicalism, right? Absolutely. And it really shows what their motives are as CARE and other groups. Their motives are to continue to allow Islamism to thrive, to smother us reformers, to counter Islamism that want to show the voice of moderate Islam and actually prevent us. I would want my children to go to this museum as Americans and realize and tell them, look, this is what happens when political Islam creates militants. They don't come out of thin air. It's our responsibility as Muslims who love our faith to defeat the ideas of jihadism and Islamism that creates this. And we can't do that, Martha, if we don't have a conversation that's real and, and isn't censored. And you make a great point about Boko Haram, uh, you know, and, and the, the girls, the school girls that have been kidnapped and taken. Uh, I mean, there, there's a direct connection between the violence that has happened to them because they're, they're wearing, uh, they, they've been asked to convert, and they're wearing Muslim guard that they weren't wearing when they were kidnapped. I, I mean, you, you cannot, you, you, everyone understands that there are many peace-loving Muslims across the world, but to, to say that there's no connection uh, to religion in these acts is to, as you point out, to not understand the underlying issue that needs to be dealt with. And, and I was in Nigeria a few months ago, and I can tell you the most courageous people I saw on the ground were imams and Muslims holding signs wanting to defeat Islamism, to defeat the ideas of radicalization. And they were naming these movements and they shaming them. And that's how they were spreading moderation, interfaith work on the ground. That can only be done with a real uh, uh, um, honest approach by Muslims, not by this denial, and especially in the lap of liberty in America, and especially at Ground Zero, where this museum is going to remind Americans forever when we were attacked on our soil, and really the greatest battle in the 21st century that we as Americans should be taking sides within the House of Islam wow. against the Islamists and not just sort of and washing our hands and forgetting about it. It's worth noting that it. the museum uh, stuck to their original plan and they left the language as is uh, and we'll see what the president has to say and how he speaks about all of this when he's there uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, doctor, thank you very much. Always good to speak with Anytime. you. Anytime.